Good morning everyone. Actually it's already um, midday. We have taken uh, breakfast uh, in our hotel and now we are going to our next destination to the lake. But previously quick update from today. Today we should have been uh, in Istanbul already but we are still in Montenegro because it looks like Montenegro doesn't um, want us go to Istanbul or wherever because they didn't accept our COVID test uh, talking that it's expired a few minutes, just a few minutes uh, after it should be the flight I mean, we were boarding and it was okay like really exact time when we were boarding it was totally okay with test but because um, the timing of boarding is like 9.30 and our test was expired at 8.40 it's not possible even to board what's your comment about that? no comments <laughs> no comments guys we need to spend two days more in Montenegro just because uh, the only option to fly is tomorrow during the night so we are uh, now going to lake that is, should be incredible but the name of this lake is Kadar uh, Lake and it's just 25 minutes from Borica so later we are going to Bir Pazar which is uh, also a small town on our way to coastline are in Vir Pazar uh, town and we are looking where it's possible to rent a boat and uh, it's actually a very small town and there is the only one railway uh, in the whole country and there is a opportunity to reach from Podgorica to Bar so the Bar is different town and there is railway goes from Podgorica to Bar and some small towns I'm waiting Marco while he's parking uh, the car and we found a place where it's possible to rent the boat uh, actually it's just uh, near the market which is near the railway uh, in this town and uh, it's possible to ask ladies in the uh, shop where it's possible to rent a boat and they will recommend the um, guy which is uh, the opposite just location like information and all these tourism here it's a small village so prepare your money uh, in case you need euros and you use different money it's better to exchange in bank uh, in Podgorica or other big town because here it's not possible to change money and the boat will cost around 100 uh, euros for two people and extra four euros for uh, entrance to national park because all this lake is a part of national park i'm very excited to go to this lake because it should be super super nice the view and all of this and the weather is super sunny today so it's very nice to go to lake Lake Skadar is the largest lake in the Balkan Peninsula. The lake's water levels fluctuate considerably over the year, though its surface area varies between 370 square kilometers uh, and um, 530 square kilometers. Here on the stick you can see there was the level of the water. Uh, it used to be uh, higher like uh, two months ago but now it just uh, decreased so much and in, in, in two months it will be even lower to meters and people will come here to fish and just have a walk but now um, it's possible to see the water in this part and uh, best uh, time to go here actually is during the april may and june like especially during the summer because there's like lotus and beautiful flowers like uh, on the water but now it's too early for that unfortunately rolling the, the scatter lake and our captain for today is marco <laughs> So guys, let me show you, like here, you can see uh, in the far, far away, there is a kind of fortress 
which used to be a prison for political uh, prisoners and it's like Alpha Cross of Montenegro. And far, far from here, you can see also Albania. There is a border with Albania country uh, in this river, in this lake. Now we were invited to the house of the owner of the hotel and this boat. He showed us a collection of old historic pieces of daily life that was uh, collected by his family during century. And we are coming to Old Bar Heart. We arrived in old part of uh, the town which is called Bar, Stary Bar, old uh, bar, and it's amazing. It's a small part of the town which is ancient and has very beautiful architecture and fortress and town, uh, like walls and all of this. And you should definitely uh, visit this part of the town if you decide to go to Bar. And let me show what is it. The price of the ticket is 2 euros per person. So guys, one more time, if you decide to visit all of these towns, you should definitely have money with you, because without cash it's not possible to pay by cart in these small villages and towns, so be prepared. A new city of Bar was built down by the water and has become an important port city for Montenegro. The old town, about an hour's walk up a hill in the mountains, has never been repaired. Once upon a time, though, the old town of Bar must have once been an impressive cultural center, full of dedications to deities, grand buildings for the nobility and residential and commercial hub for the common people. For visitors, the most important part of the old town is the starry bar fortress. You won't miss it from the outside, uh, with its large imposing stone walls and sturdy round turrets at the corners. It's also kind of historic place because it means that here was occupation and it's just kind of monument for a few people who were participated yeah, and defending this part. Look, and here is magnificent panoramic view to the hills from this fortress. Hear this noise from this uh, waterfall. There is kind of waterfall and the river going from the mountain. This town reminds me Italy. I'm not sure, but first of all because of some tiny streets and also because of some plants or trees and these colors. Powder magazine depot that was built in 1,700 fifths a year and it collects more than 650 pieces of all archaeological uh, elements, parts of the buildings that were found during archaeological research after earthquake. So many. This is so beautiful, tiny streets in all this fortress. I'm in love with this view and all parts of this fortress. Especially during this time, I guess, with the sun. And yes, very beautiful. And this um, tower. I'm sincerely, I'm sincerely impressed by this fortress even more 
than in the, um, the fortress in Qatar. It's incredible. It's like 15th century mm -hmm. and it's just amazing. All these parts and towers and churches and yes, it's so, so beautiful. And all these tiny streets that I have already mentioned a million times. It's amazing. Look. This uh, church and, uh, was actually reconstructed into a Turkish uh, mosque, so that the reason even Hammam appeared here, as you can see. Let's check it after. After all this long walking, I arrived to my favorite part. <laughs> the walk. Actually, it looks very modern, no? Comparing to all, all other parts of this. Well, I like it actually here in this fortress. It's possible just to imagine more how the life used to be than in other places I have been visited or before. Like here you can see like the gates, the north gate, south gate, and also like walking around the streets or... Yeah, I like it actually. Churches and some chapels or just some tiny places. Yes, could be. And that the reason it's called Old the Bar. The whole town. Yes. Exactly. It actually is very peaceful and relaxing and have their beautiful view of this landscape. Yes. Here is also mosaic that was used in some parts of this place. Made of actually stones, small stones. Very nice, very beautiful. And here is also a very nice street, old town, with all of the small restaurants and um, that look very, very nice, like amazing old style. And it would be so nice to visit them when it will be open, because now almost all of them, or actually all of them are closed. Fluffy. Like small bars, restaurants, very nice. We just took a test, uh, and it cost us uh, 80 euros one test. It's like insane, guys. Even in Mexico, you did like cheaper, no? No? 150 euros. Wow. Guys, I love Russia. Russia, it was like less than 50 euros. So, if you want travel, guys, it's really expensive, all of this. But at least we will have it. So it's good. And it's good that it's very quick one. Good morning, guys. Uh, today, as usually, last day, sunny morning, and we are going to Ostrog Monastery today after having breakfast in hotel. It will take us around 50 minutes uh, to reach it on by car uh, from hotel, and uh, it should be very, very beautiful. And we will tell you later more about this place. The main difference between this monastery and other monasteries is that this monastery is half Orthodox and half Catholic. And uh, it's situated uh, exactly in the uh, rock, so it's kind of a rock monastery.
We arrived in Ostrog Monastery that uh, is located in the rocks and we are in the territory of that. Um, it's very, very beautiful. We have already visited the church and um, here is a very peaceful place, isn't it? Yes, uh, actually uh, this monastery is where St. Basilius uh, lived the last years of his life and also St. Basilium uh, it's very popular between Christians and also Muslims because he's very miraculous. Uh, he's healing people and many people, that's the reason actually why many people come here um, to um, uh, experience this healing and to pray for health, for their family and um, it's a very nice place and uh, as we understood for those who are interested in that it's even possible to stay here for a couple of days um, I'm not sure if inside the monastery but also there is hotel on its way so people can spend more time here very nice place the Ostrog Monastery is a monastery of the Serbian Orthodox Church, situated against an almost vertical background, high up in the large rock. It's dedicated to Saint Basil of Ostrog, who was buried here. The monastery is located 50 kilometers away from Podgorica. Ostrog Monastery is the most popular pilgrimage place in Montenegro. One more monastery which is called Setinsky Monastery. Uh, it's a small peaceful place but um, it's I wouldn't say that there are so many um, things to do or to see just the monastery itself and now we are on our way to next destination uh, which is Lipa Cave and it should be something very very nice um, because it's one of the places uh, you must visit in Montenegro according to people that gave us advice in the hotel and we will show you but better to find something to eat Lipa Cave is closed guys so we are definitely going to eat uh, but um, according to the pictures in the internet, uh, it looks very, very beautiful. So next time during the summer, you should visit it. And we are going to search a restaurant. And finally, we came back to Podgorica. Quickly, I will show you the bridge and uh, we will share our impressions about this country. It's our uh, last hours in Montenegro, in uh, Podgorica. And uh, what's your impression for from this trip here? I feel actually like very impressed because it was super unexpected. I didn't expect just uh, to see this kind of uh, landscapes or these also kind of people. I never imagined like Montenegro uh, was this way. Uh, yes, and one more impression about people, here are so tall people, like all the guys and I guess even like girls also, they are very very tall and like kind of big <laughs> and that the reason I guess of big portions in restaurants Yes, you are <laughs> even more than some, uh, sometimes in Russia or in the same Europe, no? Mm, yes, yes, for sure Very really. tall people very kind people, very ready to help and ready to uh, assist in many things and also many people speak English even in small villages and like yeah. towns very very small that we visited still people speak a little bit English food here like good but so much meat and like kind of a basic one yeah, basic also dishes. fish but like not any sophisticated like this not bad food but any uh, like unexpert that are really surprising to you. I like Montenegro so so much and we definitely should come back here. Yeah, yeah I'm waiting for return because in summer we think this is yes. uh, amazing. Really. We have shown you everything that we visited. I hope you like it so so much and see you in our next destination. Bye! Paka, paka.